Hello and welcome to Encrypted Inc. I'm your host, Dan. Encrypted in decrypting ASX and crypto for you. Shout outs to Perth Crypto Crew and Perth Crypto Group. If you want to know more about crypto, join both these groups. Uh, the Perth Crypto Crew also has a Discord and I believe there is a link uh, on their Facebook group for that. A uh, big thank you to all my uh, support for my channel, which is my uh, subscribers. I currently have 40 subscribers. Uh, we also have a uh, draw to win a Encrypted Inc. t-shirt, just like this one, once I've hit 50 subscribers. So if you like the content, please like, subscribe and share with your friends. Uh, and uh, just a few uh, special mentions. Uh, first of all would be... Uh, Charles Leclerc for Ferrari, the Ferrari F1 driver who finished fourth at the Turkish Grand Prix. Well done, Charles. That was an excellent effort, mate. Um, congratulations to you. Um, and it's looking great for Ferrari. Um, they've just had some recent upgrades and um, they're looking very competitive. So congratulations to all the crew at Ferrari um, and also Carlos Science. Uh, another shout out or special mention is to Inhibit. Uh, the promotion, house promotions group here in Perth uh, went to your garden party on Sunday. That was an excellent gig. Uh, had lots of fun, great vibes. Uh, also, thank you to my friend Claire, uh, who bought me a ticket there. And also a big thank you to Burnsy, who's away in the mines. I hope to see you soon, mate. Um, and thanks for letting me crash at your house um, while, uh, yeah, while I'm here. So... Thank you to all of you guys. Uh, today's show, we're going to do an ASX and crypto market update. We're also going to do Secrets Revealed Episode 8. Secrets Revealed Episode 8 is how to invest and trade in a consolidation period. Now, I'm just going to go through what I do. Um, I understand, you know, everyone has their own ways of doing things, whether it be trading um, or just hodling. What I particularly do is something, I guess, a bit of both. Um, so if you take anything from it, you do. If you don't, that's fine. All right, so let's go into the uh, first ASX uh, market update. So we'll start by going to what happened in the US markets overnight. It's currently 12.43 p.m. right now here in Perth, so the uh, ASX is currently open. So the S&P 500 index overnight closed in at negative 0.69%. The Nasdaq is at uh, negative zero, uh, negative 72.72%, and the Dow Jones was negative 0.72%. Uh, uh, the SEC Composite were finished up negative 1.04%. Uh, Hong Kong's uh, Hang Seng negative 1.02%. Um, and our markets currently are in the negative as well. No surprises there. Negative 0.34% for the S&P 200. And the All Ordinaries are sitting at negative 0.42%. Okay. Uh, that's the market update, I guess, for the ASX. Um what I'm just going to also highlight, just we'll stay on the ASX for now, um, it's just a couple of things. People have, I was out, like I said, on Sunday night and people see me and they ask me, oh, you know, what's the next best altcoin? Um, and I've even had people text me, what do you think about XRP? So look, I'm going to share my views on each of those, uh, or specifically XRP. Um, so as you know, there is a court case, going, court case going on about XRP currently. The XRP price, I think it was about a week ago, roughly, did show some about 10% like gain over a, over a period of time. Um, do I hold XRP? No, I do not. Um, would I hold XRP? Potentially in the future. Um, I think a lot of XRP is like future price is going to be determined by the outcome of that court case. This court case has been going on for quite some time now. There still is no end to this court case. Um, so you could, you know, take a punt and get into XRP, hoping that the court case, you know, works in their favour, which it may do. Um, it's looking sort of that way at the moment. So you could. Um, then again, you also got to consider that, you know, XRP will have to have some form of use case as well. There's a lot of smart contracts platforms already out there that have already taken off, such as Solana, such as Avalanche. We all know Ethereum, uh, one of the first. So 
It's an interesting one, not investment advice, um, but yeah, that's a little bit on XRP and just my thoughts on that. Um, also, any of the um, references that I make to any of the stocks in this video is not investment advice. This is just purely informational and things that I pick up and just share with you. So invest at your own risk, do your own research, look at charts. Uh, that's exactly what I do and make your own informed decision. Investing is, in essence, just probability. You want the probability to be in your favor, not against you. Right, so let's have a look, um, I guess, about some ASX news. Some of it is a little bit of old news, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Um, it's about two companies, so Santos Limited. If you don't know what Santos is, Santos is a uh, natural gas uh, production mining company. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about Australian Pharmaceutical Industries Limited. Why am I going to talk about both of these? Because I think there's a, some interesting news about each of them. So let's get into it. Um, let's start with let's start with uh, API. So Australian Pharmaceutical Industries share price. Uh, on watch after profit guidance rise. So what's happening with this particular company? Now, what are they? They're, you know, a um, cosmetic and pharmaceutical company. Uh, I believe it's Priceline that they have quite a large share of. If you're in Australia, you've probably heard of Priceline. So what, I'm just not going to go through the whole article because I want to keep my videos nice and short. But how does this impact? What I want to highlight is this point here, and it is Sigma Healthcare Limited, um, which is the code SIG, and West Farmers LTD, WES. I think everyone's probably heard of West Farmers, quite a large company here in Australia, are currently locking horns for control over API. The upgraded guidance will real firm both bidders interest in the business. Furthermore, it demonstrates the resiliency of pharmacies and that despite movement restrictions, people still need medication. Good point. API's manager also deserves a tick. The company under-promised and over-delivered, which is a sign of a high-quality management team. It will be interesting to see if the takeover battle is resolved prior to the full year results being released in two weeks. I don't expect either party to walk away quietly. So what can you potentially see here? Well, it's potentially you're going to see a takeover from one of these two companies of um, Australian pharmaceuticals. Industry, pharmaceutical industries. So I've done a video on mergers and acquisitions. Is a part of my investment strategy to look at mergers and acquisitions. So look at that previous video. It has the title M and A, uh, and it just goes through what sort of price action you can expect within a merger and acquisition. Um, we can have a look at currently what Australian pharmaceutical industries chart looks like now. And if I move my head over this side, you get a better view. As you can see. Um, it's sort of gone down and declined. That's fine over over that particular period of time. But even through like, you know, what's this? 13th of July, it's 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 seen quite an interesting increase um, in price. And again, it's going up again. So watch this space. Uh, if you're interested in the ASX, have a look at this particular company. Um, and before you do, have a look at my video on mergers and acquisitions and what happens to the prices of both the acquiring and target stock within a merger and acquisition. All right, some news on Santos. Um, I'm just going to highlight this article by Forbes. This is interesting. Uh, here, I've, I've, there's a lot to read, but I just got this particular section that I want to talk to you about. Residential, commercial and Space heating RCH demand is fast catching up. Coal to gas switching in RCH has already magnified China's winter demand peaks. The trends of urbanization, higher affordability, gas distributors, building new city gas projects and winter clean heating requirements will provide gas access to a broader population gas storage facilities and flexibility supply resources like LNG will be key for peak shaving by 2050. RCH 
gas demand could amount account sorry for 40 percent of total gas demand and you probably already know what's happening in china it's there's blackouts and people aren't getting heating at the moment or cooling um so why is this important well then let's have a look at when it's winter in china Similar to most countries in the world, winter in China usually refers to the three coldest months of the year, including December, January, and February. So we're coming into those months. I mean, we're in October now. So let just in knowing this and reading these articles, and I guess this comes to also some secrets revealed about doing your research, let's have a look at, you know, one of the largest gas producers in Australia and what happened to their chart. Now you can see here from September 21, it, it's had quite a significant rise from, I mean, what are we looking at a price here at $6.14, now at $7.48, um, and we're only in October 12. So not investment advice, but this is just, I guess, more educational to you about, you know, how you might do your research and something if you want to invest in it. Right. Um, that takes care of the ASX. Um, an also interesting point I want to make as well about natural gas, which maybe people don't know, is how do you make how to, how do you make hydrogen from LNG, natural gas? The process consists of heating the gas bet uh, between such and such in the presence of steam and nickel catalyst. The resulting Endothermic reaction breaks up the methane molecules and forms carbon monoxide, CO, and hydrogen, H2. Why do I think this is important? Well, we are going to a greener future, and I know this may not seem the greenest way to get there through LNG, but it's possibility that you can make hydrogen out of natural gas. I think that's important. Some of you may not. I know Twiggy Forest is looking at green hydrogen, which is basically extracting hydrogen from water. Um, I like that. I think that's a better way forward. But um, it's an interesting thing to know, I guess, in regards to that. And if, you know, more, there may be more demand for hydrogen in the future, it's good to know this particular point. Okay. On to the next bit, which is the ASX, uh, sorry, the crypto uh, news and market update. So we'll start with the market update. So here's Ethereum. Um, as you can see from this particular point here, this is 29th of September, not that too long ago, um, to probably where we're at now. I mean, it's, it's hit a low of 3,876 Australian dollars and is sitting now currently at $4,766, uh, sorry, four, yeah, 4766 Australian dollars. Um, now, this is what I've drawn, and this, is my chart. this might be a whole bunch of squiggles to you, but it all makes sense to me. We've come out of the bull run here. We entered into a channel, then we sort of peaked above it and then sat in it a little bit more and then dipped below it again, and now we're sort of rising above and reaching again back on top and then down below. So you can sort of see the pattern that's forming here. Now, I guess in this Secrets Revealed episode, I'm going to tell you what I do and why I do it. So when I drew this exit to this channel, I'm interested in these particular low points within the channel. Why? Because that's where I want to get my entry points in. So if I'm bullish on Ethereum in the long term, which I am because I've Ethereum 2.0 uh, potentially is around the corner, and I think that could spark potentially another bull run within the crypto space. So if I've invested in Ethereum here, and then I've seen it, or even here, and I've seen it rise, and I've taken my gains up here, but I've still invested here, and it drops back down, what do I do down here? I buy back in again, and again here, at this lower point here, and again. And then what happens? It goes up, up, up into this higher end of the channel, and then I can sell my gains off here. So I'm taking profits along the way during a consolidation period, which is this particular period, basically after this run that we've had up here. So that Secrets Revealed episode eight, um, that's just a little insight on how I did it. I've done a Secrets Revealed on Fibonacci levels and how to draw them. So look back on that. 
uh, particular video if you want to know more about that. I talk about Elliott waves and I do a basic trend line, which is what I've done here as well on my own chart. Um, I will talk about moving averages in another Secrets Revealed episode and how to make that work for you. That's an interesting one. It's a delayed indicator. Some people like it, some people don't. It's all about setting it up right, in my opinion. And it's not, it's just another thing I look at. It's not you know, the gospel, no one has a gospel when it comes to investing, but you just try and make with your indicators, Fibonacci levels, trend lines, a, a, a probability that what decision you make will be the right one. Um, so I'll get on to that and I'll get on to also candlesticks and how to look at candlesticks and um, determine uh, what's doing, what's happening in a market. And that's generally more in a sh like a smaller time frame. So I'll get onto that as well. Uh, just quickly on to some uh, crypto news as well. Uh, or we can just look at the entire crypto market here or just a segment of it if you like. So here's a segment of crypto market. So we're, we're basically seeing a lot of it in the red. I think a lot of the cryptos would be in the red at the moment because you can see Bitcoin is um, down currently, uh, well, as a percentage change, 0.95%. So as you know, a lot of altcoins will follow Bitcoin. Um, so if Bitcoin goes down, a lot of altcoins will go down. If Bitcoin goes up, a lot of altcoins will go up. So you can say that Ethereum and Bitcoin um, are sort of like the um, stock indexes of crypto, even though they're not a stock. And I'm not claiming that um, cryptos are a stock at all, um, but that's just one way to look at it. All right, some news just very briefly in crypto. Uh, this is from Cointelegraph, great website if you just want to get some crypto news. Uh, I'm going to say back it. Back, yep, I'm going to say that even though it might be wrong. Uh, crypto exchange partners with Google for payments. So I'm just going to be really brief on this. This is just something interesting. Users who hold debit cards issued by cryptocurrency exchange Backit will be able to convert their crypto balances to make fiat payments using Google Pay. In a Friday announcement, Backit said it had partnered with Google to allow its users to purchase goods and services using Bitcoin, BTC, which is the um, coin code, if you want to call it that, for Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies through the Google Pay wallet and payment system. So what does this tell you? That a lot of bigger, larger companies that aren't, I guess, technically in crypto are making investments within it somehow. Um, and that's Google and their way of doing it. So uh, that's just a little bit of news on that. That's it for my show. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all the support, all the messages, um, and all the likes and subscribes you give me. Please smash the like, subscribe, share with your friends button. Um, the more you do that, the more it inspires me to create more and more content for you. Uh, this is my show, Dan, uh, sorry, Encrypted Inc. You can find me on Facebook at Dan Encrypted. You can find me on Instagram at Dan Encrypted. You can find me on Twitter at Dan the Encrypted Man. Thanks for tuning in. God bless, and I'll see you all next time.